Welcome to worship and happy 4th of July. Yes, it's a little bit different of a 4th of July, but I'm glad you're here to worship with us as uh, we come together in faith. We continue our theme, let all things now live. And today we lift up weeding and cultivating. And also we, as we celebrate the birthday of the United States at the end of our service, we will sing the hymn, Eternal Father, Strong to Save, also known as a Navy hymn, which we will use as a happy birthday USA commemoration song. It was actually written in 1860 by Wilmon Witte and has had many revisions, all inspired by the vivid description of seas, danger, and God's promised deliverance as recorded in Psalm 107. We wish you a safe and happy Fourth of July weekend. Pastor Paul is in Minnesota for the week, enjoying time with his family and a good time for respite for him. Today, our worship leaders are myself as I lead worship. Ruth Ann Poppin is our music leader with Nikki Nordskow. Cindy Zimmerman will be our assisting minister and will share her flute with us today. Bethany Gola will be running the cameras and leading the PowerPoint. And leading from home, Jody McKesson will be our greeter on chat. If you are new, we are so glad you are here. And if you're looking for more information about our church, go on our website, check us out on Instagram or Facebook, or uh, send an email and we'll get you our Wednesday word. Coffee Hour will follow um, our time together. You'll come off of our worship meeting together and then you'll get the link for the coffee hour that's posted on our website. You received it on Wednesday Word or our correspondence on Fridays, or you can find it on Facebook. Thank you for your community care donations for Home of the Sparrow, Turning Point, and Crystal Lake Food Pantry. I took a peek in Luther Hall and I see lots of donations, so we really appreciate that and it will go to help our community. And thank you also for those who continue to support us financially, uh, as we help the community and our world. Our Latinx community is still in great need of masks, so if you are a person who is a sewer, please keep um, sewing those masks, or you can um, purchase them at the store. Thank you also for filling out the re-entry survey. We learned a lot, and I wanna let you know a little bit about how we plan and what our next Plans are as we phase in to worship space following the recommendations. So next week we will still have leaders in the worship space. We will be doing Zoom. The following week on the 19th, we are going to be asking our council to join in worship and to see how we do our worship time and make sure that you are safe. The following week, July 26th, we will have the council and invite their families as well as the Max family as they uh, celebrate the baptism of Natalie. And then after that, on August 2nd, we will invite you to come in, but by reservation. We will have a limited amount of people who can, can come in and that will be 50. And we will try that out slowly but surely. We will um, get there and get more included in, and maybe even add more services but we are gonna take our time and in, in what it is, is, we are mindful of you and keeping you safe. Also, today we have something new. If you look on the altar, there are individual communion kits uh, for you and we are blessing them. We will bless them during our communion time and they will be available for you during our meditation and prayer time at church. You can take the communion while you're here at that time, or you can also bring them home and share them during Sunday worship time. We will again have prayer and meditation for you on Monday, Wednesday, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday from 1030 to noon. And in addition, we will have time on Wednesday evening from six to eight. This is a time to come into church, to center yourself, as we are in this time of this pandemic that is um, hard um, and wearing on us. There is pandemic uh, fatigue, but also many things going on in our world. 
uh, that can use our prayers. Monday, uh, ball, or softball did not happen on uh, last Monday, but it will happen this Monday. Um, they have regulations uh, uh, for playing together. The softball team will play at Lions Park in Cary at 6.30, and you are asked to bring your own chair um, so that you can do social distancing. They will be playing the Harvest Bible Chapel. Cancellations, if it's a, like a rain day last, like a cancellation last week, uh, we will put that on Facebook. Uh, so if you're wondering if it's a little bit rainy outside. We continue to pray for Anthony Furry. He is still in the hospital and we pray for uh, Arlo Ayers. He had foot surgery. He's doing all right and he's home and healing. Thank you for being with us. Let us now prepare hearts and minds for worship with a moment of silence. Bless be the Holy Trinity, one God who so loves the world and all who live in it. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God, creation, and one another. Reconciling God. We expect nature to serve our needs, and we have damaged it in the process. We trample every wild place and pollute your waters. We abuse your good earth until it cries out in pain. Forgive us, loving God. Remind us of the covenant you made with the whole earth. Nourish us so that we can restore your awe-inspiring creation. Christ, the one who is buried into the heart of the earth, and then raised up to new life, forgives you all your sin, freed from your burdens, be led by the Spirit to do God's healing work in the world. Amen. Thank you. 
Worship the God of all creation. We gather to praise the Creator, the continuous source of all living things. Come, worship our God who breathes life into being. We praise the Creator who fashions the forest, whose trees clean the air of this world. Come, worship our God who forms life out of soil. We praise the Creator whose land brings nourishment. Come, worship our God who receives our lament in the wilderness. We praise the Creator whose Son brings healing to all creation. Come, worship our God who sends waters flowing with life. We praise the Creator whose baptism unites us to be one in the body of Christ with all creation. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Faithful God, most merciful judge, you care for your children with firmness and compassion. By your spirit, nurture us who live in your kingdom, that we may be rooted in the way of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. A reading from Colossians chapter 1. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the saints and faithful brothers and sisters in Christ in Colossae, grace to you and peace from God our Father. In our prayers for you, we always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love that you have for all saints because of the hope laid up for you in heaven. You have heard of this hope before in the word of the truth, the gospel that has come to you. Just as it is, just as it is bearing fruit and growing in the whole world, so it has been bearing fruit among yourselves from the day you heard it and truly comprehended the grace of God. This you learned from Epaphras, our beloved fellow servant. He is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf, and he has made known to us your love in the Spirit. For this reason, since the day we heard it, we have not ceased praying for you and asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of God's will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding so that you may lead lives worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him as you bear fruit in every good work and as you grow in the knowledge of God. May you be made strong with all the strength that comes from his glorious power, and may you be prepared to endure everything with patience while joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. 
He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved son in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sin. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. to you, O God, in Zion, and to you shall vows be performed. O you who answer prayer, to you all flesh shall come. When deeds of iniquity overwhelm us, you forgive our transgressions. Happy are those whom you chose and bring near to live in your courts. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of your house, your holy temple. By awesome deeds, you answer us with deliverance. O God of our salvation, you are the hope of all the ends of the earth and of the farthest seas. By your strength, you establish the mountains. You are gridded with might. You silence the roaring of the seas, the roaring of the waves, the tumult of the peoples. Those who live at earth's farthest bounds are awed by your signs. You make the gateways of the morning and the evening shout for joy. You visit the earth and water it you greatly enrich it. The river of God is full of water. You provide the people with grain, for so you have prepared it. You water its furrows abundantly, <clears throat> settling its ridges, softening it with showers, and blessing its growth. You crown the year with your bounty. Your wagon tracks overflow with richness. The pastures of the wilderness overflow. The hills grid themselves with joy. The meadows clothe themselves with flocks. The valleys deck themselves with grain. They shout and sing together for joy. Holy 
Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. He put before them a parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, an enemy has done this. The slave said to him, then do you want to go and gather them? But he replied, no. For in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let them both let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house. And his disciples approached him, approached him saying, explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, the one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one. And the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will, be, will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers and they will be thrown them they will throw them into the furnace of fire where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father let anyone with ears listen the gospel of the lord praise to you o christ Did all these weeds come from? In May, I said to myself, I am going to do a good job this year. I'm going to keep up with all the weeds. We live in a wooded area 
uh, where there's lots of plants growing in the front and back of our house. And to tell you the truth, I really have a hard time deciphering between whether it is a weed or it is a good plant. My son would say, well, it's up to you to decide on that. I called our neighbors over a couple times, different neighbors, to help me to decipher between the different weeds and they two good gardeners were having a hard time telling me which one's to pull and which one's not to pull. On Monday, though, I called one more neighbor over because there was this two-foot plant that had this lovely little purple fluffy flower coming out of it, and I wanted to know, was that a weed or was that a good plant? And she said, oh, that's definitely a weed. I was a bit embarrassed because it was a pretty predominant weed right in the front of our house. I had to kind of laugh at that. All the walkers, of course, got to see my lovely weed growing. Also, things have with all the rain and maybe not having a lot of time to get in the backyard. I looked in some of the flower beds in my backyard and there are a whole lot of weeds growing. It is out of control. And I actually looked a little bit around our grounds and the weeds seem to be taking over all over the place. I thought I was doing good. Where did all these weeds come from? As we continue to work through this pandemic fatigue, systemic racism, political divisions, and more, we ask, how did our world get to this point? It seems that our world is out of control. We often live with the assumption that if we do good, we work hard and we are kind and loving enough, everything should work just the way we want it to work. That's a sense we get from today's gospel. Master, they asked the fa farmer, did you not sow good seed in your field? Of course he did, they knew that. That's why they were so surprised that they discovered weeds in that field. That isn't supposed to happen. Where did these weeds come from? There is an anxiousness in their question. They want to know what happened and who is responsible. So do we. That's what we want to know when we find weeds. We want an explanation and someone to blame, hold accountable, and even punish. Jesus, however, seems less interested in that approach. As a matter of fact, he doesn't give it much time or attention. An enemy has done this, he says. That's it. He doesn't explain it. He doesn't identify or name the enemy. He doesn't give instruction, define, drive out, or punish this enemy. Behind our need of an explanation and the name of the offender, is a truth, in truth, many of us neither like or want to accept. It's one of the challenges of today's gospel. It's a challenge that happens every time we face the weeds of our life and world. The reality, according to Jesus, is that our lives and our world are filled in which good and evil, life and death, joys and disappointment, that, that which we want, that which we don't want, grow and live side by side. The wheat and the weed stand together in our world and each of our lives. But what about those weeds? What do we do about them? We really should do something, right? Not according to Jesus. He says, let them grow together until the harvest. That makes no sense. How can we let them be? The weeds are bad and the weed is good. Isn't there something we can do? Don't you want us to pull up the weeds? They ask their master. He says, no. For in the gathering of the weeds, you would uproot the weed along with them. Now I'm going to pause a second. 
Now, it may be tempting now to go to your family and say, well, Jesus says we don't need to pull up the weeds. Tempting. But we're talking about something else. And I'm kind of talking to myself, too. It seems the separation between the wheat and the weeds is not clear cut or black and white as so many of us want it to be. Jesus is clear about that. We are not the ones to be the judge or to make the judgment. Let them grow together until the harvest, he says. Jesus shows more interest in the growth. He is willing to wait and be patient. As Jesus' Jesus's followers, we too are called to wait and to be patient. So do we need to do nothing? Just sit and wait? No, that's not what Jesus is saying. There's plenty to do and plenty that challenges us. Jesus' statement, let them grow, can also be translated as forgive them. Jesus commands us to love. Love your enemy. Love your neighbor. Love yourself. Love God. Maybe that's how wheat begins to untangle its roots from the weeds. And maybe that's how it shows itself to be wheat and not weeds with love and forgiveness. Amen. With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and a life everlasting. Amen. Let us join together to pray to God our stronghold for all the needs of the world. We pray for the church around the globe where Christians are assembling for worship, protect them from viral infection, where Christians are worshiping with print and screen, 
grant them faithfulness in your word. O oh God, you are gracious and full of compassion. In mercy, receive our prayer. We pray for the well-being of creation. Grant renewal to the air, the waters, and the lands. Preserve the fields of Kenya from locusts. Nourish our country's green spaces, O oh God. You are gracious and full of compassion. In mercy, receive our prayer. We pray for the nations. Keep the world from war. Pave the way for just elections. Guide our national and state governments in finding ways to redress the wrongs of racism and to ensure equality for all. Oh God, you are gracious and full of compassion. In mercy, receive our prayer. We pray for those who are sick and suffering. Console the fearful. Feed the hungry. House the homeless. Shelter the runaways. Care for the sick whom we name in our hearts or aloud. O oh God, you are gracious and full of compassion. In mercy, receive our prayer. We pray for infants and young children that they be carefully tended. We pray for teens that they keep patience throughout this time. We pray for school boards that they find solutions for the fall semester. Oh God, you are gracious and full of compassion. In mercy, receive our prayer. We give thanks for those who have died in faith. Comfort all who mourn loved ones. And at the end, bring us and all your people into your eternal rest. O oh God, you are gracious and full of compassion. In mercy, receive our prayer. Receive these prayers, O oh God, for the sake of him who bore the heavy burden for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. All right, it is time for our children's sermon. And I have our field pack here, and it's been fun to discover weekly what we are asked to do as families. And so this week, you will be looking at animals and wildlife. And for the activity, it tells us that you are going to be playing a Bizarre Behaviors bingo sheet, and you are to be using your magnifying glass. And so let me pull that out. And it looks like you are going to look, try to find a praying mantis and a monarch butterfly and cicadas, possibly the shells of them, and other things, mushrooms in the ground, all kinds of fun things for you to do. I know you all adults want to do this too. So have fun with your family discovering, and there's lots of other activities for you to do. We believe that all we have, all the living things around us, is provided us by God. And so this is a time for you to breathe and remember that every small creature on the ground to the flying in the sky are all created by God and take time to appreciate all that's around you. So we're going, I'm going to have our leaders help me do our prayer together, and you can join as well. Dear God, Dear God thank you for your gift of creation. Thank you for your gift of creation. That brings us joy. That brings us joy. To see your creation. To see your creation. And all that's around us. And all that's around us. Help us. Help us. To care for your creation. To care for your creation. And appreciate it. And appreciate it. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please take time to share the sign of peace with those in your household and take time to text friends and call friends and even send cards.
Let us pray. All we have comes from God. Generosity takes an open heart and a love that asks for nothing in return. Your offerings help us to continue our ministries. Please prayerfully consider sending an offering to our church to support the needs of our community and the world. God of goodness and growth, all creation is yours. Forests, lands, and prairies, wild places, rivers, and streams. As we bring our offering to you, we ask that you bless them so that your kingdom comes on earth as it is in heaven. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who entered the heart of the earth opening the way for humanity to be restored with all creation to your divine goodness. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Breath of life, we praise you for the gift of your creation that sustains our very living. In great joy, you sent to the canvas of the com comos, cosmos, your son, Jesus Christ, to bring restoration and healing to all that is broken. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Renew our awareness of our place in the web of creation. Send us with a hunger to advocate for a healthier planet. All glory is yours, blessed Trinity, creator, redeemer, and sanctifier, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Thanks be to God. Trust that God is present whether you are 20 feet or 20 miles apart. Even if you are by yourself, you are not alone. The body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Mm -hmm. 
the body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. The, the bread of the earth and the fruit of the vine strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. God, you never give up on your beautiful yet damaged creation. Though Jesus was broken on the cross in the resurrection, the risen Lord encounters us with new life. Send us who have received his body and blood as signs of your redeeming power that restores our relationship with all creation and unites us with the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who breathes life into you and all living things, who heals all the world and who sustains all creation, give you peace and purpose in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
in peace, care for creation. Thanks be to God.